Hello Year 7, your work this week is about planning and investigation and this is probably one of the most important things to do in science and in Key Stage 3 science is that you understand and you learn and you remember how to plan an investigation. So I know you've done all of this before but it's something we really want to keep fresh in your minds for September so we can carry on without having lost any of your great progress um, around investigations and planning. So I'll just run through briefly um, an example and talk about the different parts of the plan and then um, I'll let you know what you're going to be doing this week in planning your own investigation. So first of all, in an investigation you sometimes will be asked for a hypothesis. Now what a hypothesis is, it's quite similar to a prediction but it's more like a statement that you write um, as if you know that there's going to be a relationship between um, these two variables okay so in this case what I'm going to do uh, I've just um, decided to use a really straightforward investigation just to use as an example this isn't the one that you're going to be writing about in your work so don't write about plants this is my example and then you're going to be doing something different so in my example I've got some seeds that I've planted and I've soaked them in water for different amounts of time first one of the seeds I soaked in water for um, five hours, one I soaked for 20 hours um, and then the other one I soaked for 50 hours. So it's about soaking the seeds in water before planting them and then once they've been planted, they've grown and then I've measured how tall the seeds have grown. Um, so just sort of made up straightforward investigation just as an example. So the hypothesis is where, as I said before, you state that there is going to be a relationship between these two things. So my hypothesis here, I would say that um, the amount of time that seeds are soaked for will affect the height of the plant. OK, so I'm not saying oh, I think this is going to happen. I'm saying it like I know it for sure, like a bold statement. So uh, the amount of time the seeds are soaked for will affect the height of the plant. And the important thing to do for the hypothesis, I know we've not got to the variables yet, but you need to know what your independent and dependent variables are so that you can say this will affect that. My independent variable will affect my dependent variable. So I want you to have a go uh, in your investigation at writing a hypothesis for this. Then your variables. So we start off with the independent variable first of all. Now this is the thing that you're going to change or the thing that you're going to compare. So sometimes um, you change it yourself. Um, so like in an investigation where I've been soaking my seeds or when you add acid to a test tube and sometimes you're not necessarily changed it yourself. It might be that you just look um, at a different group of people or a different example of um, an organism or you're looking at a different month of the year or something like that. So something that you're going to look at and um, to compare it to each other. So in this investigation, the thing and I have changed it myself is the amount of time the seeds were soaked for in water. So that's what I would write. And it's not just one word for the independent variable, it's a sentence. So um, the variable for the independent variable for my investigation would be the amount of time that seeds have been soaked for um, in water. Then the dependent variable um, is the thing that you get as your result. Now, some people say the dependent variable is the thing you measure. But there might be lots of different things that you measure in an investigation. You might measure um, how much liquid, the temperature, um, and then you might measure things out and um, measure the distances to make sure everything's the same. It's not everything you measure. The dependent variable is actually the thing that you measure to get to your results. So I always say to my classes that um, if you imagine yourself doing the practical with your results table, like imagine yourself there with a clipboard or with your um, exercise book, and you're collecting your results in a results table, as you're doing it, what is the thing that you're going to measure there or count or check and then write down? And that result is your dependent variable. OK, so in this case, what I would do is I would get my ruler out, measure the height of those plants, and that would be the dependent variable. So the height of the plants in centimetres is my dependent variable. So we have one independent variable the amount of time I've soaked the seeds, the one dependent variable, which is the height of the plants, and the control variables. Now you have lots of control variables. Basically, if you change or compare the independent variable, you've got some different conditions, 
some different things to compare. That's your independent. The dependent will change because of that. Everything else you should be trying to keep the same and they become all of your control variables. So I could get you to really try hard and think of 10 control variables. Let me try and think of uh, a bit of a list now. So I could have um, the type of seed, the size of the seed, the amount of soil, the amount of water that I soak them in, uh, the um, temperature of the water I soak them in, um, how much I water them every day, uh, how much time I give them before I measure them, the temperature of the room that they're in. You see what I mean? Boring, but you see what I mean. So it's not the depend not the dependent, not the independent, it's everything else that has to be kept the same. So in this case, yes, there's tons of control variables that could affect our results if we didn't keep them the same. Some you might naturally just keep the same without even realising that it's something that needs to be important uh, that you keep the same. So instead of writing a list of 10 control variables, I normally ask for three, but I want them to be three that are quite important. So I want them to be three that actually affect the results. So I don't like it when people put that the control variables is going to be the same type of test tube or the same test tube because um, the piece of glass around it might not always make the difference. So in this case, um, as long as the, the seed is covered in water, the amount of water won't make a difference. The amount of time they're left for is definitely going to make a difference. If I measure one after three days and measure another after two weeks, it's going to make a huge difference. So one of the control variables I would choose to write about is the amount of time left for, the amount of time the plants are left for before I measure the height of them. Another one that's quite important will be the amount of water they receive as they are watered um, when they're growing. So maybe a certain amount every day. And then another thing that I think would be quite important is the soil, because if one's in compost, the other one's got um, some feed or the other one's just in normal soil out of the garden, that could have quite a big effect on them. Probably as well, um, the type of the type of seeds really important. So they're not going to be the same seed, but they need to be the same type of plant. Um, because if you grow a sunflower, it's going to grow at different rate and height as some cress. So those things pick out for control variable things that are really important to your results and they have to stay the same. Then the results table. So basic um, guidance here for drawing results table, and you should remember all this, but this is all a big recap, hopefully, um, is that in your results table with a ruler, mine's a bit wobbly there, but with a ruler, you will have these columns, Oh, I want to draw that again. Sorry, you will have to use a ruler. Or you might be doing it on your computer this time. Okay. So you'll have two columns. And you always write the independent variable into that first column heading. So in this case, I um, change my independent variable. The thing that I change, the thing that I compare is the amount of time the seeds are soaked for. So um, I would write not just time, I would write time the seeds were soaked for in that first column. So that's the independent variable. Don't write independent variable there, but that's what's going to go in that first column, your independent variable. Um, so in this case, yes, the time, amount of time the seeds were soaked for. And then you need a unit in brackets. You need to write a unit. So I said before in hours, didn't I? Five hours. Uh, 25 hours, 50 hours um, in there, so the amount of time the seeds are soaked in water for. If you put um, the unit in here, whatever it is, whether it's centimetres, um, degrees C, um, millimetres, whatever it is, you don't then have to write it over and over down this column. You just write your numbers. And we know, because we've written it at the top, that they are all 5 hours, 25 hours, etc. So remember, not just one word, it's a short sentence, a short little um, thing to summarise the independent variable that goes in the first column. The second column is your dependent variable. So the thing that in this case, um, the thing that you measure to get your result. So in this case, it's the height of the plants when they are grown. So the height of the plants. And again, I would put that um, with a unit centimetres. 
The difference here is that what you can do, and what I'm hoping you're going to do in your work for us this week, I'm hoping you're going to repeat it and take an average as well. So if you do that, the way to do it is to split up this column. Oh, I need a wee bit of data. There we are. Um, so we'd split this column out. Maybe I'm going to do it three times and then take an average. OK, so as long as you write your independent variable in a short sentence here with a unit, your dependent variable is a short sentence here in a unit. And then I might try it one, two, three times and calculate an average. When you've collected your results and you calculate an average, the average you're calculating is a mean average. So like you've been learnt in maths and used around school, you'll calculate a mean. And the way you do this is to add them together and divide by how many there are. So I want a mean for each result. So if I had five hours here and I had three different um, plants that all had their seeds soaked for five hours, what I would do is I'd add this number, this number, this number, add them together and then divide by three because there's three of them. And then I put an average there. So that gives me an average for um, that first um, result. So you do your averages that way across the rows. One, two, three, add them together, divide by three and put your answer there. When you've done that, um, you're, you can draw a graph with your results. And when you graph your results, you only have to graph those averages. You don't have to include every result. Now, again, like I said before, you can put, it's all about variables, this, those two important variables, the independent and dependent. So the independent was the amount of time the seeds were soaked for. The dependent was the height of the plants. What you can do now, then, is you can put on your table the independent in the first column, dependent in the second, and then you know where to put them on your graph as well. So hopefully you should know this. The independent variable goes at the bottom. So don't write independent variable or IV like I have. Write out what it is. So I would write amount of time the seed was soaked in water. And then up the side, I would write the dependent variable, which in this case would be the height of the plant average in centimetres. And then again, you put your, you put in brackets the unit there. Okay. If you're drawing a line graph, you'll know you're drawing a line graph because you'll have a continuous um, variable along the bottom. So the way I sometimes describe to my class about depend, uh, continuous variable is I'd say to them, can you get 4.5? Can you get 4.3 or 14.2? If you can get um, a scale where there's lots and lots of different um, points along that scale and you can get any of those points along that scale, that's a continuous variable and you should be drawing a line graph. So in this case, could I get five and a half hours? Could I get 5.75 hours? Yes, because it is, it's time, time is continuous scale. So in that case, I don't write 5.25.50 along here, spaced out. I want to put all of those results along here, I'd go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'd have to make sure that I measured it out so I could do 50. Then up the side, the height of the plant. I would have to find my highest average, whichever was the highest average um, plant, and this line would have to go up to that. Again, go in an even scale. So you either can go 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Or you can go in twos if it fits on better, or in fives, or in tens if that fits on better. So um, find a nice, um, evenly spaced way to, to create a scale on there. Okay, so that in, the independent and dependent variable, I know you've done all this, but this is um, to keep it, we really need to keep this fresh in your minds. The independent and dependent variables are so important because your hypothesis says independent variable will affect the dependent and you put them in there the variables you say what they are independent dependent and then the important controls that you've got to keep the same to make it fair the results table i put my independent variable in this column and the dependent in there i don't want you to write independent i want you to write what it is for the sake of investigation and for the graph again independent always at the bottom and that decides if it's a line or a bar chart 
and dependent on the size. It will be a bar chart if these are separate categories. So not a number scale, but something like um, a type of plant instead. So if I was doing uh, the sunflower, the crest, the different types of plant, then that would be a bar chart down here. OK, I'm going to tell you what your investigation is now. It's not about plants. Forget the plants. OK, so we're not doing that now. This That was just so I didn't want to give you the answers when I was talking about your uh, investigation. OK. So your investigation involves um, basically something dead straightforward. I don't really care too much about the investigation this time. I'm more interested in your planning and collecting the data and what you do with the data. So if you have to do the investigation slightly differently, it doesn't matter. It's just about um, planning and identifying variables and sorting out your data. If you have any problems with the investigation or if you'd like to do something different, if you've got a different idea, something you want to investigate at home, um, then yeah, just email your teacher or email me and um, you could do something to do with um, something melting, something rolling down a ramp or um, anything you can think of that you want to do at home, you can do if you'd like. But I'm going to give you a really nice straightforward one to do uh, anyway. So all you need to do is take a piece of paper. Now, if you want to do a large piece of paper, whatever you've got at home, big piece of card, again, it doesn't matter. But just to keep it straightforward, if you'd like, you can just do a piece of A4 paper. And um, your thing that you're going to uh, change about this paper is you're going to change the length of it. OK, so you're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to drop it and time how long it takes with a stopwatch on your phone or wherever. Use a stopwatch to just time how long it takes to go from dropping it to the bottom. If you just stand up in your house and hold it right above your head with a straight arm, that should give you enough time to time it on a stopwatch. It won't be perfectly accurate, but it'll be OK. If you want to stand up on the sofa or stand, um, you know, from the top of the stairs or something like that, if you've got sort of a safe way of just dropping it a bit higher, then do it. But just standing with your arm in the air is fine. Drop your piece of paper and time how long it takes. And you'll have to have measured the length of the piece of paper. Then you just chop a bit off, measure the length again, and then um, do the exact same thing again, drop it um, and take uh, take the time it took. I'd like you to do repeats if you can. So if you're going to do repeats, I suggest just with the same piece of paper, you just do it three times from that height um, before you chop it, rather than chopping three pieces of paper. Just do it what three times then chop it three times again, chop it again, okay? So really straightforward um, and just put your data um, into your table. But the mo most important thing is about planning in this investigation. So you're going to um, write a hypothesis, write out what your variables are, draw a results table, collect your data. If you're struggling, you don't have to do it three times and an average, but um, Three repeats and an average is good. Um, then the graph, I know might, the graph might be difficult. What would be perfect is if you don't do it on computer, is if you drew it on graph paper um, and took a picture for your teacher. But I know you've not all got graph paper. Um, so what you can do, you can either have a go at making a graph um, on Excel or, you know, in, in on the computer. Or you can, if you aren't able to um, do it another way, what I'd like you to do is just draw the axes um, and what your teacher is going to be looking for is just that you write out what the independent variable is here. You write out what the dependent variable is there and you you do a correct scale for your data um, and 